I love these new glasses that I have uh, recently discovered. And uh, the beauty is it causes, uh, when I go outside, to become automatic uh, sunglasses. Now, that's wonderful if I'm wearing the pair of glasses that does that, but I noticed the other day that I couldn't see anything. And I'm like, what is going on? I have my glasses on, but I realized I had my sunglasses on. They're not the ones that when I'm indoors, they turn clear like this. They're the sunglasses that stay dark whether I'm inside or outside. And I'll tell you this, it was really hard to see while I was inside uh, this book. It got more and more challenging. You know, tonight I wanna to talk about healthy thinking. And it's interesting that when your thoughts are, and it doesn't take much effort, but when you allow your thoughts to be negative, to be, uh, just, you don't have to take much effort. It will get dark. It will get negative. It will be pests, you know, looking at kind of the half empty perspective. Um, and when you do that, pretty soon it's going to affect your emotions. And it's like this riptide. It reminds me of when I was growing up in California. I, I, I'd be out in the ocean. It looks safe. It looks, you know, like perfectly uh, a fun day to be outside swimming. Um, but there's these flags that are indicators that maybe I need to be careful. And if you look into it further, those, those flags are telling me it's a riptide out there and you're gonna be sucked and pulled into it. You and I, if we're not careful, even though we've made Jesus the Lord of our life, even though we are wanting to be a seeker of truth. If we're not careful with our thoughts, those negative uh, kind of, and it's a work of an enemy, when he puts those uh, thoughts and, and just he's bombarding all the time of, you know, that you can't do anything right, uh, that you'll, you'll never get this, uh, you're, you're made this way. You can't change all those negative thoughts that are not align with God's truth, with his plan for your life. It's like this riptide that tr that's trying to pull you away from God's plan, for his purpose, for the full life that is yours in Christ. So as we think about and as we talk about tonight healthy thinking, I pray that it will bring about a fresh clarity, a perspective, and how about this, a responsibility to be intentional with what you are thinking about. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I praise you that you have given us victory. I thank you that you have given us your almighty word that is alive, that's active and sharper than any two-edged sword. It renews our mind. It provides a spiritual perspective and enables us to realize that full life that is ours in Christ. Tonight, tonight, this night, this moment, we choose the life that is ours, the healthy life, the full life that is ours in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So think of this scripture in Proverbs, Proverbs 4.23. And give a shout out to our facilitators, to Pat and, and Ann and Tammy. You know, let them know you're, you're on and that you're ready to engage in, in what we're talking about tonight. So Proverbs 4.23. This translation uh, puts it this way. It says, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. Be careful what you think. Sounds like a choice to me. Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. The quality of your thoughts, it will determine the quality of your life. And whatever our mind focuses on, is what will play out in our life and eventually will shape who we are. So if, when I was younger, I thought I couldn't do anything right. I was insecure and, 
and I thought, well, I can't change this. This is who I am. I'm, I'm, I like to just be an introvert. Can you believe it? That I believed that lie for a while, that I was an introvert, but in all actuality, Christ, he made me an extrovert. He sent me out to uh, make disciples, but I was listening to that lie. And even though I had made Jesus the Lord of my life, if I, in, a, in those early years, I, I just didn't realize who I was in him. So whatever our mind focuses on, whatever it is, is what will play out in our life and will eventually shape who we are. Our thoughts, they have that power. And uh, they control our words, right? And also our actions, our feelings, our emotions, and even ultimately will uh, lead to either peace and happiness or fear and discouragement. And it's easy to get caught up as I mentioned earlier, in that riptide of negative thinking. So how do we walk out in that best practice of healthy thinking? I'm glad you asked. You know, it's just like I was, I love going to restaurants and anyone that knows, since I don't cook, restaurants, I mean, it's such a treat when I go out. And you've got this full menu, right? So many options. Kind of reminds me of our thoughts. We don't even have to, you know, work at thoughts coming. Thoughts come, right? It's the battlefield of the enemy. And he's he's constantly bomb, uh, just like bombs, just throwing them our way. And uh, studies show that there's thousands of thoughts that that will come across our mind throughout uh you know the hours that we are awake but you and i we don't have to take in all those thoughts just like a menu we can be selective and we can choose those thoughts that are healthy life-giving and and life-forming and uh, god's word can be that catalyst to help us, uh, you know, just kind of show us God's plan and his purpose to be able to thrive, not survive, but to live that life more abundantly. So I have a word of encouragement to you. You and I, we can overcome. That's right. There's too many people who want to live victorious they want to live that victory-filled life, right? We're, we're told in God's word, we're more than conquerors. We, are, we have that overcoming faith in us. But sometimes we don't want to fight the battle because the word declares it's a good fight of faith, right? There is a fight out there. And victory is ours and has been made possible through Jesus Christ, right? We over come by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, but it means that we have to fight and overcome obstacles. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 through 58 gives us these truths that we can thank God for giving us victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed ones. So now, beloved, come on now, beloved, stand firm, be stable, and enduring. Live your lives with this unshakable confidence. We know that we prosper, that we excel in every season by serving the Lord, because we are assured of our union with Him. And it makes our labor productive with fruit that endures. We are victorious. You know, when God begins to awaken and reveal who we are in him, there's a choice. We all have a choice. That's the battle. We can choose to allow that behavior, the hurts, uh, all that from the past to carry in. And we could try to ignore it and try to stuff it down. But 
it won't die unless we are purposeful, as it says in Colossians, and we're reminded in Ephesians, that we need to rid ourselves of these characteristics, these emotions. We need to choose what we're thinking about. We need to choose those things from the menu of life that fit God's plan and his purpose for you and me. So when God begins to deal with us through uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, that those wrong behaviors, he'll give us a nudge. He'll say, ah, you don't want to go there. We get a nudge when, like for example, when anger wants to stir up or when I begin to think uh, that I, I can't do this, then I get this reminder that just like a, a light bulb that comes off that uh, reveals that truth um, that in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it's like, uh, I'm not accepting that thought, right? Because God's word says, I can do all things. But when uh, God begins to stir and reveal his plan and his purpose for us, the enemy, he's constantly bombarding our thoughts with uh, what we can't do, who we aren't. And, and we have no capability of ever attaining or reaching that full life. But I have great news. We have, how about this, good news. We have a God that has already, through his son Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, we are victorious. And we can deal with wrong behavior. We can alert our mind and say, and be intentional and take responsibility. I'm not going to think on that thought. I'm not going to allow that thought to remain. Um, and, and it's easy to say, I can't help it. But how about this? With healthy thinking, we can have courage. And with faith, we can say, I'm ready to take responsibility for my actions, for my thoughts. And Lord God, with the, your Holy Spirit, I call on that helper to help me get my life straightened out and walking into that fullness that is mine in Christ. And you know, that's good news, isn't it? We don't have to live this life alone. We have a helper, the Holy Spirit, who is counseling us, strengthening us. He's that advocator, uh, advocate, I mean, and he's there to assist us each step of the way to embrace that full life, to remind us once again, we are victorious. We are overcomers. So avoidance, as I mentioned, and not facing the issue, it can be a major problem. And the reason being is when you don't address uh, all that hurt, that bitterness, our life before, if we don't address it with the word of God and allow, as um, I was praying at church on Sunday, breaking those generational curses, if we don't, to decide and stand and say enough is enough. Those situations, those hurts will still have power over us. We can learn that we don't have to accept every thought. We can learn that uh, attitudes and words that defined our past, we can choose to uh, say enough, you will not define my future. But it's through the word of God his truth, that we are set free. We've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. We have been made new creatures, but our mind needs to be renewed in that truth of who we are. And that's that healthy thinking that we need to embrace. And so if uh, we are mindful uh, and intentional with our thoughts, we'll see our actions our emotions that will begin to align. But how about this? You know, it's like when I was with my grandchildren this weekend, we were constantly working on good manners. We were working on putting others before themselves. We were dealing with the um, truth that 
we are ever ready as God's servant to put others ahead of ourselves. And it was a constant effort. And, and let me tell you this, making a decision like we are right now to be healthy thinkers, it's something that it's not a one-time thing. We have to renew that commitment over and over and over again. Because the influence of this world, it's kind of like the advertisements that we, we might see on television or hear over the radio or even the billboards or the buses that go by. They're constantly awakening and stirring those desires. And the enemy, he's wanting to stir and awaken desires and longings that will not define who we are in Christ, but actually steer us away from that truth, that foundation, that rock that is ours in Christ. So in that, you and I, we need to choose to have healthy thoughts by thinking things on purpose, to be intentional. We can learn that we don't have to accept every thought uh, that might fall into our minds. We can throw out what is the wrong ones and replace it with the right ones, which is why Joshua had said that we're to uh, not only uh, meditate on his word day and night, but let it not depart out of our mouth. And there's something that happens when we say it out loud, when we think it, it, it brings, uh, it kind of reminds me of my, my phone. It charges me up. It gets me uh, fired up with uh, just the power needed to be able to stand my ground and resist the devil and to fix my mind on who I am in his. You know, God has great things for you and I to do. And we are able to do these things through the power of God's word. And it means being careful of what we're thinking about. Being mindful of the thoughts that are floating in there. And being intentional to decree and declare who we are in him. So much of our thinking, it's habits. How about that? You don't even realize these patterns. Maybe it's uh, how you were raised, but you are now, as a believer, you are engrafted in Christ. You are a new creation. And old things do pass away, and behold, all things are new. And as you address those lies of the enemy, as you cut it off, those generational curses, and declare they have no power, when you declare and decree who you are, I'll, I'll tell you what, it, it's like David. You know, when, when he was discouraged, he strengthened himself. You and I, we have to strengthen ourselves each day we get up. You know, everything in us just wants to pull us down. But we have the living power, the resurrection power in us. And as we begin to decree and declare, and I love how Cindy Trim in her book, Command Your Morning, as we begin to command our morning and declare our day, it does something. So our mind, it might be that battlefield. It might be the primary way in which Satan will fight with us. But we have that overcoming victory. We have spiritual weapons. And 2 Corinthians, it talks about how that we can pull down those strongholds. We can pull down those thoughts that do not align with God's truth, with the life that's ours. And as I said, it's not a once in a lifetime decision. It uh, does get easier as we are steadfast, as we uh, keep moving and pressing forward, being mindful of what we're thinking about, knowing that our thoughts will become words and ultimately actions. And, um, and as we guard against that phrase, I can't help it. I remember hearing my grandkids uh, say that to me, even my children when they were younger. And that just set uh, alarms in me because we can 
help it. We have the power of Almighty God who gives us the strength, the might, and power. We can be strong, and like it says in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, we can be confident because we are victorious in him. And by not pushing those bad thoughts from our mind, by, by just doing nothing, we are allowing those thoughts to invade us and to take us captive. So we're not going to do that, are we? We're going to stand our ground. We're going to put on that armor of God, that helmet of salvation, that sword of the spirit, that shield of faith. Come on now, all the different pieces of that spiritual weaponry that's ours in Christ. We're going to, we're going to put it all on. And as uh, Philippians 4, and I love that uh, scripture, it reminds us uh, that, um, and that's my next point, as we take responsibility for our healthy thinking, we are reminded to fret not in verse 6, right? To pray about everything with thanksgiving. And then this peace comes, this peace that will guard our heart and our mind. Think of that, this peace. And then right in verse 8 of Philippians 4, let me read it to you. It says, keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fashion your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. When you fix your mind, when you are intentional, that's that healthy thinking I'm addressing tonight. It's not enough to have positive thinking. I think that's great, but we're not talking about positive thinking. We're talking about intentional thinking, fixing our mind on who we are in Christ. So healthy thinking, it's less about being positive. Come on, give me a shout out in that chat. Come on, you and I, we are intentional. We are standing our ground and we are realizing that we have the power of the Holy Spirit to choose life, to take responsibility, stop blaming others and even our circumstances, but choosing the life that is ours in Christ Jesus. The enemy, he might come to steal, kill and destroy. He might try to throw those fiery darts in the battlefield of our mind. But you and I, we have a God that has declared he can, we can lift up that standard, right? Because of the word of God, it is alive. It is powerful. It brings about, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, that shield comes up and that it just stops those fiery darts because we intentionally will not allow those uh, to come in because it does not align with God's word. Often for me, when I'm in that place, you know, the other day, it was weird. I have this special ankle when I fell and broke by slipping on black ice, the nine pins that are there and a plate. Uh, but thankfully, I was able to walk again. And I was doing fine. I mean, it's been many years now. And then last week, out of the blue, I could not walk. I couldn't walk up the stairs. I couldn't walk down the stairs. Pat was looking at me and I had both my hands on the railing, just kind of hobbling along. And I'm thinking the next day I'm leaving in a car to, for the first time to have all the grandchildren together. That was my Mother's Day gift. And in over a year and a half, and I'm like, this can't be happening. And my thoughts, let me tell you, there were plenty of thoughts there saying, oh, you can't have these kids. You better call them off. Call it off. You, you're, you can't walk. How can you have five grandkids for a weekend, for three days? Not happening. And all this kept bombarding my mind. And that is why I am talking about this tonight. Because I stood my ground. And I remember just hobbling around this house saying, you know, in the name of Jesus, I am like that, <laughs> that beggar 
who, whose ankle was strengthened because Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And in the word of God, it says his ankle was strengthened and he began to walk and leap and praise God. I don't know when my ankle in the night as I slept was totally restored. And when I woke up that morning, I was able to walk again. You and I were in a battle in this world. We have an enemy that is wanting to steal, is wanting to kill, and wanting to destroy the very purpose and plan that God has for us. But we are choosing life. We are choosing to be intentional and taking responsible responsibility for the thoughts that are coming and bombarding our, the battlefield of our mind. We are choosing to declare the very life and promises of God. And as I wrap up, we are renewing our mind. And we must renew it ongoing. And uh, Romans 12, 2 reminds us that as we allow the world to mold us, it will mold us in that image its own image, but instead be transformed from the inside out by renewing our mind. And as a result, we'll be able to discern what God's will is, whatever God finds good and pleasing and complete. You and I, let's make a decision. Put it in your chat. I choose to renew my mind ongoing, every day, continuously. I choose to hide God's word in my heart, and I choose to speak God's word out of my mouth. God has given you the ability to renew your mind. It's a choice. He invites you into that opportunity to discover the truth of how he sees you and uh, enabling you to discover how he feels about you, that truth of who you really are in every day every day. Come on, put it in the chat. Every day you have a chance to experience the much needed renewal of emotion, perspective, and belief. God's word, it will awaken and stir your plan, your unique purpose. It will help reveal who you are in him. It's a cleansing. It brings about a wholeness it resets and reboots us in a way like sleep does in the night and brings us to a place of health and wholeness for the new day. And God's word, it brings a wholeness to us, a refreshment. And every day, God longs to speak the truth of your identity through the word and his spirit. So let's look today at the power of renewing our mind and how we can consistently experience that renewal. I feel God is doing a shift in you and me to choose healthy thinking rather than stinking thinking, to choose and be responsible for the thoughts that are coming our way. And if they don't align with God's word, his truth, we're just going to choose to not think on it. And we are going to pull that stronghold and cast those thoughts down. Because we want to experience his love, understand his purpose for us, and to embrace that full life that is ours in Christ. I am so excited that you could join me this evening. And I look forward to unpacking some other truths later on through the Mondays ahead. But in the meantime, we have a special great series on Thursday, the Lady Boss series. And please come and hear my daughter and my granddaughter share what God has been doing through their entrepreneur endeavors. And may it awaken and stir in you what God might want you to explore and discover for yourself. God bless you all, and may God's blessings arise in your life. 
in Jesus' name. Good night.